Hello guys, Xcoundrel here. I'm back from working away in Poland and I'm about to bring you my next guide. This time we're looking at Ringo. In this guide I will talk to you about his abilities, his weapon power and crystal power build paths and then we'll look at tips and tricks for playing Ringo. Now because Ringo is fairly simple, he is the starting hero that most people end up playing with, we will then also look at positioning for team fights and when to use your abilities. So let's crack on. Ringo's abilities are actually fairly simple, so it won't take too long for us to go through them. His heroic perk is called Double Down, and that literally allows you to land a critical strike after killing anything. That anything can be jungle minion, that anything can be lane minion, or another enemy hero as well. Very, very useful trading tool, and we'll talk about it more in the tips and tricks section later on. His A ability is called Achilles Shot. It is a point and click ability that applies a slow, that slow duration and intensity goes up with levels. It also scales with crystal power, so if you choose to go down the crystal power build route, you actually get a little bit of extra damage out of this ability uh, and can be used to finish off escaping targets. Ringo's B ability is called Twirling Silver. This is probably the most useful weapon power ability that Ringo has because it drastically increases his attack speed and movement speed, especially when overdriven. Uh, and it's one of the main ways that Ringo becomes so powerful in trading and in team fights. Now, if you choose to build Crystal Power, you will get an on hit Crystal Power damage buff. Um, so every basic attack will apply Crystal Damage. This does not happen if you don't build Crystal Power, however, it is a zero damage unless built with Crystal Power specifically. And finally, it resets Ringo's basic attack animation. And what I mean by that is if you basic attack and then click it, it will give you an instant basic attack following. Ringo's C ability is Hellfire Brew, a massive fireball that makes Ringo static when casting it. It does a lot of damage on impact that pierces all shield and then applies a burn that will damage enemies in that area that it impacted for seven seconds following. If there is reflex blocked, the burn won't apply. It has 75% crystal power ratio and a 25% crystal power ratio on the burn damage so lots of damage if you choose to go down the crystal power build path now i'm going to look at his weapon power build path first because i think it's the most versatile and probably the most common build path for ringo i max my b and overdrive it first because the movement speed and the attack speed is insane and it is the best ability you have in this kit uh, I then leveled the C over A for the pure damage output reasons. Sometimes I like to initiate a fight with a Hellfire Brew, or sometimes I like to just have that extra burst damage to chase someone down. Now, with Weapon Power, you know that I will always start Weapon Blade, Swift Shooter, and Halcyon Potion. This is the same for all of my Weapon Power carries. I would sometimes consider uh, Shielding if I'm against a Celeste or something, but honestly, this is just the best build path uh, to start with. Now working towards the mid game, this is what I want to aim for. I want my boots, I want my Sorrow Blade completed, I want a Blazing Salvo and a Reflex Block. Now Sorrow Blade for obvious reasons, good item spike, high damage output. Blazing Salvo then allows me to choose between my Critical Strike build path or my Breaking Point build path. And Reflex Block because I need Reflex Block as a Ringo in most situations. I'm not like Gwen, I don't have it built into my kit and it can be a lifesaver. Especially if you can Reflex Block and then get that added movement speed out of your Twirling Silver. It gives you huge kiting potential. Now let's look at the full build path of one of the two directions that I like to take Ringo in. Now, you notice that the mid-game build path had Blazing Salvo. That's because it can build into one of two things that I like to take as my second weapon power item. This first of which, which I take 80% of the time, is Breaking Point. I then finish up my damage with the two Tyrant's Monocles. Breaking Point is better when you're playing against uh, melee weapon power carries that are going to build tanky, uh, or at least include some armor in their kit, or against compositions that are starting to stack armor early on. It's better to have Breaking Point because longer team fights will give you a better damage output and it does better versus the armor. I then follow up with two Tyrant's Monocles. Now, if you are needing extra defense, if you're struggling, with an enemy weapon power carry, scrap one of the Tyrant's Monocles and pick up a full metal jacket. Or if a melee weapon power carry that relies on attack speed is threatening you and you feel like this is going to allow you to duel them 1v1, you can pick up an Atlas Pauldrons. Now I mentioned there were one of two build paths that I like to go from my mid-game build path, including that Blazing Salvo. This is the second, literally subbing out the breaking point and putting in a Tornado Trigger. This is my critical strike build path that I would consider in certain situations. Quite good in solo queue because it's often easier to carry with this. You don't rely on your teammates as much. Um, but again, it's less effective into certain situations. So I would build this when I'm dealing with squishies that I have to kill. Say they've got a double squishy composition, um, you know, like a Celeste and a Scarf in the Jungle 
or attacker who doesn't build defense, for instance. If I need to get to the back line to blow up those squishies like Celeste or Scarf, this can be really useful. It's good against targets that don't build armor. Critical Strike is unanimously more effective against no and low armor targets than the Breaking Point builds. So if they don't build armor, this is way more effective. And it's also really good at pushing an advantage. If you build a Blazing Salvo and you get those crits in a team fight, uh, you can actually snowball the game probably more readily than you could with a Breaking Point. But again, like I've mentioned, this build is less safe. Breaking Point is safe because if they build armor, you know that if throughout an elongated team fight, you're going to be more effective. If you build this and they start stacking armor against you, it can be really difficult to get the damage output that you want in a team fight. So you have to be very calculated as to when you choose this. And like I said, the certain situations that you need it for are blowing up squishy dealing with no armor targets and looking to just push your advantage from the early game and those are the three main situations that i would consider the critical strike ringo weapon power build path there is a final item addition that you can make uh, and swap out a tyrant's monocle for a bone saw this is effective in both the breaking point build path and the critical strike build path mainly because it's good at dealing with high armor value if you're going up against lots of armor sometimes this can be really useful uh, and some people do mention it in their guides it is worth remembering especially as you progress to the later stages of the game and people have got like full metal jacket and atlas pauldrons bone saw can be really good now let's look at cp ringo and we'll start with his abilities your max a for the uh utmost damage output obviously Achilles shot has got really good scaling you don't need to max b because all it gives you is extra movement speed and attack speed the on hit damage will always remain the same with twirling silver so you'll always do the same amount of damage per basic attack regardless of the level and obviously you max c for the damage output because it's got really good cp scaling now we move towards the starting items for CP Ringo, and these can actually vary quite a lot. I often like to start with a normal weapon power build path because it helps me CS in lane. If you don't pick up a weapon blade, it can be very difficult to land those last hits onto minions in lane, and this just gives me more consistency. The swift shooter can be used for a alternating current build path as well, so it's not wasted if you want to go down a CP route with alternating current. If I don't want alternating current, I often go towards the crystal bit, and if I'm struggling with energy, I sometimes sometimes pick up the energy battery because I can build it into a clockwork or an echo depending on what I want my final build path to look like. And speaking of final build paths, let's have a look at mine. Now this is the non on hit Ringo that sounds really weird but this is the Ringo that is kind of based around his hellfire brew a little bit more burst orientated I have two shatter glasses for the scaling broken myth obviously to build those stacks and for the piercing and then I have the clockwork to be able to main 100% uptime on twirling silver boost my CP and obviously the cooldown reduction is always lovely now if I want to go full hellfire brew I can sub that out for an echo and have a double hellfire brew in one battle but obviously you lose the up time on your twirling silver and you don't get any added cooldown reduction now if i want to go for two defensive items like a full metal jacket for instance i suggest getting rid of the echo and picking up a clockwork it helps maintain that burst because it has the cp boost on its passive and it kind of makes up for the lack of a fourth cp item if you add echo here you're kind of going all in in your hellfire brew and your hellfire brew won't do huge amounts of damage in the late game now, I can often think about going Halcyon Charges instead of Journey Boots, but if you have a Clockwork, I wouldn't recommend it. You don't need more than 40% cooldown reduction, really, because you're not going to be using that many Hellfire Brews, and you'll always have at least one happen during a fight, and you're unlikely to get two happening in one fight as well. And obviously, the uh, extra energy regeneration isn't really needed for Ringo, because you don't use that much energy particularly. Uh, but it is very useful if you choose to go down the alternating current build path, because if you choose to go down the alternating current build path, it, the likelihood is that you're not going to need all of the cooldown reduction that both Halcyon Charges and Clockwork provides you. And you might actually want some more scaling on top of that. So you'll often end up subbing out the Clockwork and picking up something like a Shatter Glass, so you'll have the core build of Alternating Current, Broken Myth, and Shatter Glass, leaving you for two defensive items at the end. And then you get your energy regeneration and your cooldown reduction from the Halcyon Chargers. Now, this won't allow you to maintain 100% uptime on your Twirling Silver. But when you have Alternating Current, you don't rely on Twirling Silver all of the time. You don't need that 100% uptime. And, and the small amount of cooldown reduction that the uh, Halcyon Chargers would give you means that you'll only be waiting about one and a half seconds following your Twirling Silver to get it back off 
off cooldown and you can actually use that time to you know cast an achilles shot or kite away or reposition so it's not absolutely necessary to have the clockwork in this build but if you do want the clockwork you can take out the full metal jacket and add it at the end that will allow you to maintain 100 uptime and then you can sub out the halcyon chargers for the journey boots giving you a build that looks a little bit like this now we're going to move on to the tips and tricks section of the Ringo video. And actually there aren't too many to know with Ringo, but one of the main ones is knowing how to use his passive effectively, double down. Now I'm going to last hit this minion, which is going to give me a guaranteed critical strike. I'm then going to activate my B ability and start harassing or basic attacking the Gwen in lane. Just watch how I do it. Here we go, I'm going to activate that, and now I'm going to step up to Gwen, activate my B ability, and suddenly get a guaranteed critical strike. I've got the extra attack speed and movement speed, and it's very hard to, for Gwen to trade against me. You can continue to do this in lane, and it just means you cannot get out-traded. Ringo is so good at trading with everyone. I can get one free critical strike on my enemy every time I ba basic attack a minion and last hit it. It just forces the Adagio to come up to lane to help her out. Um... And just means that she can't trade back with me at all. So make sure you use this tool to your advantage because it is a very powerful trading tool. And I'm going to display it right here. This is about three minutes later in the game. I've got my Sorrow Blade from good early farming. Look how much damage I can do to this Gwen, especially in conjunction with the Catherine. I last hit a minion, bam, 250 damage right to the face. And then she instantaneously gets blown up. And that's all through good use of my passive. The next tip that I want to talk about is understanding when and where to use Ringo's ultimate. Now, the first of this is going to be knowing that you have a one second cast time on the ultimate. So you have to use it from a safe position most of the time. The first instance that I like to use the ultimate in is what I call the three man bonanza. And that's when you can hit two or more people in the initial impact. It's a really good opportunity for you to get maximum devastation using an ultimate that is meant for devastation. So uh, if you can hit it on two or more people and you find that opportunity, do it every single time because you'll either force reflex blocks or you'll end up doing significant damage to someone. The next opportunity that I want to talk about is using Hellfire Brew to chase down kills. When the enemy is on the retreat, they've often used their reflex block already, they're often on low HP, and especially as weapon power Ringo, you can use that Hellfire Brew as that chase down. It uses it to chase down a kill and can often help pick off retreating targets very easily. Again, like I said, you know, when they're retreating, they won't have that reflex block up. So it's usually a really good opportunity for you to just try and pick up a kill on the end of a team fight. And it also means you're going to be safe while casting it. Now, one of the most common uses for Ringo's ultimate is an, as an initiation tool, either to zone an enemy away because of the oncoming fairly high damage impact ability, or just to force a reflex block from someone that so uh, an ability like a stun can land, and then you can capitalize on that. You'll see here, I use it to just zone the Gwen away, uh, and she actually ends up reflex blocking it, but it buys us time to just basically destroy these crystal turrets, all through the zoning use of the Hellfire Brew, and that essentially allows us to close out the game very very easily. The next thing I want to talk about is team fight positioning. Now if you look at the minimap you can see that there are three enemy members below us. They're trying to make a flank maneuver. I've highlighted it with the red circle in the top right corner. Now as a Ringo in this situation especially as I know my enemy is attacker I want to position myself far enough away so that he I am not the first target for him. He tries to go on the CP Kestrel which then immediately allows him to get stunned by the Catherine. At that situation is when I pounce. I was far enough away and out of sight that I can come out, I hit my twirling silver and I land those big basic attacks that are heavy hitting critical strikes as well and I went down the critical strike build path because none of them are built armor uh, and that just allowed me to come out the back of that team fight I'd positioned very far away and then allowed me to be that ranged carry that essentially no one could touch because once Taka had used his ex-ret suit I felt very comfortable going absolutely all in because I knew there was very little way that I was going to get punished for it I'm going to show you another team fight that you might have seen earlier from the hellfire brew clips Look at my positioning here. I'm going to go aggressive and try and put pressure onto the Gwen. That will zone her away immediately. And this is something that you can do as a Ringo. Being aggressive, especially with the crit build, means that you can actually either blow up the enemy carry entirely or zone them away from a fight. And this is another part of team fight positioning. You need to find your openings, especially as a carry. You want to be able to hit as many people as possible um, or get as much damage down as possible. And in this particular team fight, it was a blend of both keeping my positioning at a distance so that I wasn't the main target for Taka, but also threatening the Gwen enough to force 
force her out of the team fight or outright kill her. Had I followed her up, I might have actually completely killed her and I would have achieved the same result. The next thing I want to talk about is stutter stepping, which is the process by which you can move and attack at the same time. And at very high attack speeds, you can actually cancel your basic attack animation, allowing you to actually effectively increase your attack speed in total. Very important on Ringo more so than any hero because of his twirling silver attack speed buff, giving him one of the highest attack speeds in the game. Now, it's very, very simple. I tap here, 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 and so on and so forth. You kind of get the idea. It's a consistent set of consecutive taps on the target that you want to basic attack, followed by the direction that you want to move in, allowing you to kite enemy melee heroes, and also, you know, weave in extra basic attacks at high attack speed, allowing you to increase your damage output at the same time. It's super, super good once an enemy has used their gap closing abilities and you've managed to negate it with a reflex block or boots, for instance, and then it's trying to chase you down. You'll always have that range advantage over them and you can usually kill them in a kiting fashion. Now, we have looked at lots and tips of tricks in this section, so we're going to have to go over them very quickly just so you are kind of uh, confident going forward. Now firstly, using your heroic perk is key to trading in lane. You want to last hit a minion, then try and basic attack the enemy hero. Last hit a minion, try and basic attack the enemy hero. Use that in combination with your twirling silver and it's unlikely that they'll ever be able to out-trade you. You will win 99 out of 100 trades that you choose to take. Secondly, Use Hellfire Brew to hit multiple targets if possible, especially if you're going down the CP build. If not, you can use it to chase down kills after a team fight. you can use it to zone a carry from a team fight before it even starts, or you use it to initiate a team fight to get that big burst damage before your team looks for the engage. At the very worst, you can blow a reflex block, which means that that carry is then susceptible to stuns or susceptible to your melee assassin that's going to try and take them out instead of you. Thirdly, learn how to position yourself in a team fight. Now, this is something that comes with a lot of practice. You won't be able to learn it overnight. But the best advice that I can give you is try and keep yourself at a safe distance, especially from your captain hero who could essentially soak the blows for you. Once the enemy threat is engaged on another target, then you can step in and just start dealing that DPS. You saw it in those two team fights. I had the opportunity to step in once we'd already been engaged on, and that's when I really did the damage necessary to carry the team fight. And lastly, perfect your stutter stepping. Use the technique that I showed earlier on and practice it in solo games. It's very, very easy once you get the hang of it. It's literally just a consecutive set of two-point taps on the target, away from the target, on the target, away from the target. Honestly, it's as easy as pie once you get hold of it. And finally, I thought we'd have a little look at a threat meter in terms of um, enemy heroes that you should be aware of. Right at the high end are heroes that can gap close and deal burst damage to you. I'm talking about Idris, Taka, Koshka, even Fortress to an extent. CP Fortress can be a real pain for Ringo to deal with. They're very hard to kite away from. They will consistently apply damage to you, and that can be a real pain in the butt. Um, there are heroes that will do that um, to you anyway, but you can kite them a little bit more easily because they only have one gap closing ability. Things like Black Feather, things like Ozo, things like... Um, Jewel, Cruel, all of these people are still a threat to you, but you can kite them a little bit more readily than you could kite something like a Taka or a Koshka. So they're perfectly fine as long as you are able to avoid that initial engage by them. And I actually think Grump Jewel will be up there as a big threat to Ringo. Um, I definitely think it's going to be a pain for Ringo to deal with that particular hero when he comes out. Going down the list is going to be the more static heroes. You outtrade. Uh, Gwen in lane 24-7 to be honest as long as you get that double up or double down passive rather uh, low mobility heroes that you outrange like Rhyme very easy to take him down Vox you outrange him in lane completely he can't usually trade into you as long as you're avoiding those resonance bounces things like Sky um, they will be a nuisance to you but usually if you go down the critical strike build path you can burst them very quickly if they try and series strike offensively and Saw you'll never out trade him in lane usually but as the game progresses you should do better and better especially when comboing some sort of CC, and he's actually very, very bad against things like CP Ringo, so, um, you know, he's not really that far up there on the threat meter, so, this is a very basic threat meter, I didn't put huge amounts of thought into it, so don't take it absolute to heart, but it gives you an indication as to what Ringo is bad against, and I can tell you, he's very bad against heroes that will stick to you and deal burst damage, like those four I mentioned. Anyway, guys, that'll be it from me. 
Thank you for tuning into this Ringo guide. I know it was a bit longer, but I did try and cover both weapon power and crystal power and include a fair amount of tips and tricks, including stutter stepping and team fight positioning, because Ringo actually himself is a fairly basic character. Um, it's why he's often suggested as the first hero that you pick up, but I thought this would be a useful guide, especially to newer players who want to try and learn to perfect him, because at the moment he's very, very strong. Anyway, if you've liked what you've seen, like, comment and subscribe, and I'll try and get more guides out as soon as possible. Sorry for the delay on this one, I was away working in Poland, but hopefully you guys understand, and I will be back very shortly with another video.